Hey guys, this is Kate from Abidable.com, and you're listening to the Abidable Podcast. I'm just a regular wife and mom who's had my life transformed by learning to study the Bible on my own. If I can, you can. On this show, we help you know and love God more by abiding in Him through His Word yourself. In this episode, we're launching the podcast with a very dramatic title. If I hadn't, I would have died. This is episode one in a five-part IF series to kick off this brand new Abidable podcast. Okay, so back to the title. If I hadn't what? Learned to delight in the Word of God. If I hadn't learned how to abide in God's Word, I would have died. I didn't choose this title because I was looking to be overly dramatic or to get clicks. I chose this title because it's true. Not only is it true, but I'm in good company in expressing this sentiment. The author of the longest psalm in the Bible, Psalm 119, is unknown. Scholars think it might have been David, maybe Ezra, maybe Jeremiah, maybe even Daniel. But all four of these men, we know, suffered tremendously throughout their life. And Psalm 119 is filled with vivid descriptions of the plots and the slanders, the the difficulties and the afflictions of whoever this person was of their life. And all the way in verses 92 to 93 of Psalm 119, we find this dramatic claim. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. It's my guess that whoever penned this psalm would have, of course, been familiar with the law of Moses, the Torah. The book of Deuteronomy, which literally means repetition of the law, is a book all about remembrance. Remember who God is and what he's done. According to Moses, how are we to remember and why are we to remember? Well, he tells us in Deuteronomy 32, 45 to 47, Moses is about to die. He has just finished his 43 verse song, reminding Israel all about their God. And he says, take to heart all the words by which I am warning you today that you may command them to your children, that they may be careful to do all the words of this law. For it is no empty word for you, but your very life. And by this word, you shall live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to possess. It is your very life. And here we have the psalmist agreeing, if your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. This is my story, and it may also be yours. It may sound dramatic for me to tell you that had I not learned to delight in God's word, I would have died. My story is complicated, but whose isn't? I've been a Christian since I was 17. I'm in my 40s now. And I'd say I never really learned to consistently abide in God until close to the age of 40. I spent many years wandering in the desert trying to follow God, but confused about who He really was, why He allowed certain things to happen in my life, and even angry at Him for not having the details of my life unfold in the way that I thought they would. I'd be in and out of the Word— I'd open my Bible to try to find something that spoke to the specific circumstance I was facing. I'd look for signs, even sometimes just letting my Bible fall open, hoping he'd speak to me on that page. If he didn't, or if nothing sounded good or right to me, I'd shut up my Bible, put it on the shelf, and stop engaging personally with him for weeks, months, and sometimes even years. The desire to abide was there, but not the know-how. This set me up for the spiral of a lifetime when, burned out after a massively devastating church collapse, I decided I didn't want to be around God or his people anymore. I went into hiding. And it was in this pit that darkness nearly swallowed me whole for good. There were nights where I was so deeply depressed that I'd cry myself to sleep and just write help on my pillow with my finger. 
I couldn't talk to God. I couldn't talk about God. I couldn't open my Bible. I didn't want to watch sermons. I didn't want to go to church. I avoided his people. And as a result, my marriage suffered. My friendship suffered. My child went years without hearing much or anything about God. And so in many ways, my marriage, my faith, my relationships, my health, everything was dying. Until one day, in such despair and darkness, God brought to mind the story of Jesus in the wilderness. And there I remembered the Son of God, starving and isolated, facing the father of lies, Satan himself. And I remembered, I recalled that Jesus did one thing, and one thing only. He quoted scripture from Deuteronomy, the book of the law. Luke 4 says Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit and was being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. And three times Jesus says, it is written, and then he quotes scripture. And it was because of this command of scripture, we read that the devil departed from him. And it was then that I realized my life depended on my ability to stick my nose in the crack of this book and not come up for air until I knew how to delight in Jesus and to delight in his word as Jesus did. If Jesus needed the word, how much more did I? I'm going to do a quick deep dive to show you how you can go from just reading a verse to pulling it apart in order to find treasure. This is the heart of everything we do at Abidable. So let's read the verse again. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. Psalm 119, 92 to 93. We actually already did some cross-referencing. Cross-referencing is looking at scripture in order to interpret scripture. So we already did some of that by reading what Moses had to say. It is no empty word for you, but your very life. And we also did a wilderness case study of Jesus as he quoted Deuteronomy, causing Satan to depart from him. Let's do a quick word study. What does it mean to delight in God's word? And how can we never forget his words so that we can live? I mean, really live. Okay, so this is super cool. You ready? Delight in Hebrew means to enjoy something or someone as an object of delight. It's the idea of taking great pleasure in something to the point of true enjoyment. The Hebrew word for delight, sha'ashaim, is only used nine times in the Old Testament and five of them are right here in Psalm 119. As an interesting side note, the other times this word is used is in reference to God delighting in us, his children. It's a lot easier to delight in the word of someone who already delights in us, especially and in spite of all of our wayward wonderings. But back to this use of the word for delight. We've already read how it's used in verse 92, if your law had not been my delight. We also see this word used in verse 24. Your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. And then again in verse 77, let your mercy come to me that I may live for your law is my delight. And again in verse 143, trouble and anguish have found me out, but your commandments are my delight. And finally in verse 174, I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. This psalmist is not playing. He really wants us to see the value of delighting in the law of God. So much so that he uses the word perish, or in Hebrew, avad. He says, had the law not been his delight, he would have perished. This means to have vanished, gone astray, died, been destroyed, killed, even exterminated. These are big, dramatic words that he's using. But instead of perishing, delighting the law of God has led to life. This word here means to be quickened and to be restored to life and health. It is for this reason that the psalmist vows to never forget God's law. And this is the big treasure, in my opinion. This word for forget, shahat, literally can mean to ignore, wither, or cease to care. This is a picture of mislaying something, kind of like forgetting where you put it, and then being oblivious from it as a result of lack of memory and lack of attention. That could probably explain what a lot of us had sadly done with our Bibles, couldn't it? 
I know it sure could have for me for the first several decades of being a Christian. But God never stops running after us. He pursues us and calls us home. When we come home, even while a far way off, he spots us and he comes running for us. And we are welcomed back into his loving embrace. And as we are, we realize there is nowhere else we'd rather be. It's like what Peter said to Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Abiding in God's word is one of the primary ways that we can be with God. Maybe you're like me. I sought life everywhere else only to fall into the pit of despair. Abiding in God through his word is the only place you'll find me nowadays. I hope you'll join me as I abide in him through his word. For all of these reasons, I'm launching a dang podcast. That is a funny story for another day. Maybe you resonate with my testimony. Perhaps you know that pit well. Perhaps your Bible is dusty and forgotten on a shelf somewhere and you don't want it to be so. Maybe you have the desire to abide in God through his word but lack the know-how. And maybe you know someone like you who would benefit from tuning in as well. Would you share this podcast with them and help spread the word? Friend, you are able to abide in the Bible, and not only are you able, but you're dependent on the Word for your very life. Without it, you will surely perish. So let's learn to delight in it together. That's it! The end of our very first podcast episode. Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow our podcast so you can be notified when new episodes drop. Speaking of new episodes, on our next one, we'll be taking a look at the next if in our five-part series, If I Can, You Can. Father, we ask that you teach us to abide in you through your word. We desire to delight in your word, and we want to know and love you more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We'll see you next time. Until then, let's abide.